exciting and momentous occasion. We're going to begin this, this ceremony of the new year. We're going to get beginning with the opening prayer for Reverend Cross. Will you come up? and eternal Father. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this year, dear Lord, and the opportunity, dear Lord, to walk through 2020. We ask blessings on our leaders, dear Lord, and also as they lead, help them to realize that they are servers. <clears throat> Watch over and keep us, dear Lord. Rain down that special upon, rain down that special blessing upon us. This we claim in the name of your son, Jesus. I got to say it twice, Jesus. Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Cross. I used to be able to run up those stairs. I know you don't believe me. Thank you very much. It's a good day in the neighborhood. Okay, well, everyone stand. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And we have a very special young lady that's going to lead us in that pledge. This is Kamala's daughter. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. My name is Reverend Horn. I'm the new chair of the Hudson City Democrats. And I really want to thank you guys for coming out. Again, this is a historic day. This is a beautiful day for Hudson. It's not just the start of a new administration, it's the start of a new decade. And it's just exciting to see people coming out. And this is truly democracy in action. These people are here because you voted them in. And so. And, and it's truly, I'm not going to be with you long. It's truly going to be a, a wonderful year with great changes for the city. You know, Kamal sent uh, an email to, to us as we were talking about the uh, arrangements for, for this. And he said, in, in the email, he says, you know, this is great that you know, we're doing this. He said, are you going to be with me during the year, during the hard part of governing and running the city and making this an even better city? And so I wrote him back that we would be. And we often put a lot of emphasis on what leaders can do, but a lot of public policy is driven by what people do. And so I wrote him back that, yes, we are with you. And so before I go, I'd like us all to let them know that we are with them. So on the count of three, we're going to say, we are with you. One, two, three. We are with you. With that. So with that, we're actually going to give them an official role, and we're going to bring Tracy here to actually make the official swearing in so this, so this uh, tremendous program can continue. Ms. Tracy Delaney. <laughs> if you want to know anything about us, ask her. <laughs>
swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the, and the Constitution of the State of New York. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of First Ward Alderman. The duties of First Ward of the city of Hudson, of the city of Hudson, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, 
Aye, Dominic Moran. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And I will faithfully discharge. Faithfully discharge. The duties of Fifth Ward Alderman. The duties of Fifth Ward Alderman. Of the City of Hudson. Of the City of Hudson. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. that are being sworn in are the Commissioner for Youth, Mia Reed, the Commissioner for Aging, Robin Waters, the Commissioner of Fire, Timothy Hutchins, and on the legal team, there's Cheryl Roberts, Jeff Baker, wow, Victoria, okay, so maybe Victoria's not here, that saves me for not being able to pronounce his last name, Zoe, Palatonio, okay. I didn't want to murder your name. All right, and Dan Orshak. 
You guys, please stand and be smart. of the state of New York. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of Commissioner of Public Works. The duties of Commissioner of Public Works. Of the City of Hudson. Of the City of Hudson. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability.
Don't worry, this won't be too long. <laughs> thank you all for coming here today. And thank you for allowing me to represent you for another term as president of the Common Council. <laughs> Hudson is at a critical moment in its history. Do we want a city that caters to outside investors with little stake in our day-to-day -day lives? Or do we want to empower and serve the needs of those who have made Hudson their home for generations, as well as those who moved here last year, or those like me who made this their home a decade or so ago? I think the answer is obvious. You may feel the government does nothing for you, and on the national level, our voices do seem to be ignored. But here, in this unique and vibrant place, your government cares. We want to repair your sidewalks, renovate our parks, keep the tax burden in check, and get those damn trucks off the streets. All of this requires planning and money, but it also depends on you the citizens of Hudson, to pay attention to what we do, we in government are doing. You might wonder, how do you do that? Well, you can start by contacting us with a call or an email. There are 10 more members of the council here today. Talk to them. Each ward has two aldermen representing you. Reach out to them. Don't complain on social media. That's for grumpy people who really don't want to solve anything. <laughs> If you know me, you know I walk these friendly streets constantly. I love it when people stop me and tell me what's on their mind. If you have an idea for change, I want to hear it. And I also want to know how you think that idea is achievable. The job of the council is to turn your ideas into reality, and that's the hard part. It's difficult for a simple reason. I believe in participatory democracy, as I have tried to practice these past two years. We only achieve good solutions when as many people as possible are involved. And even if you can't participate yourself, you still deserve to witness an open and fair process. In that regard, by the way, starting January 1st, all city meetings will be live streamed on radio station WGXC 90.7. <laughs> Responsive, clean government must always be the goal. No insider deals, no backroom manipulations. There are two final things I'd like to say. I want to thank my personal attorney, who also so happens to be my wife. Her clarity of thought and her moral compass helped guide me through turbulent times. Finally, I want to point out that I know you all care deeply about Hudson for an obvious reason. You've elected a mayor of vision and determination. I've known Kamal for a number of years now, before he became active in local government. We both developed our speaking chops at our local radio station, WGXC. But while I spent much of my time on air goofing around with the great Ellen Thurston, Kamal and his team, Vern, Rayner, both here, uh, thoughtfully discussed the issues that concern us here in Hudson, teen suicide, domestic violence, homelessness, and yet they managed to crack us up as well. Kamal's quick wit, his deep empathy, and its engagement with all of Hudson proved one thing. He is the mayor Hudson needs and deserves as we move into the next decade. <laughs> with that, I give you Kamal Johnson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. All right. I needed that moment to bask. Is that what they call it, basking? I needed, I needed to just look out on this crowd and um, just humbly be thankful. Um, I want to start this out with um, a few thank you, uh, few thank yous, and um, the first one going to my beautiful mom who is in the front row here. I watched you, you know, as a young black woman 
grow up around us and win every fight even though you had four boys. Um, I watched you triumph through drugs and domestic violence and everything that life threw out at you and still you came out on top. So I knew that that was instilled in me that I would never be bogged down and I thank you for that. Your son is the mayor. <laughs> I, I also want to add that also doesn't mean that I won't need to borrow money. <laughs> I want to thank my brothers here for believing in me, um, guiding me, talking to me, keeping me sane, uh, especially through this campaign. And, um, you know, just being there by my side. We, all we had was each other. And that means the world to me, because that's all I needed to get to this point. So thank you. And of course, the most popular person in the room, my daughter, Asia Johnson. I thank you. Um, you are the sole reason why I'm up here. You are the sole reason why I'm able to go in the right direction when so many paths could have pointed me in the wrong direction. And your brilliance, your beauty, your style, everything about you is a better, smaller, cuter version of me. <laughs> and I'm honored to have you as a daughter. Um, there's no better duo than me and you. And I tell you, she says to me the other day, she says, she comes in the living room and she says, you know, I'm not going to live in your shadow. <laughs> and I said, what? I said, where did that come from? So I'm like, well, I don't know if right now it feels like a pretty good shadow. And she's like, yeah, it is, but... I'm not gonna live in your shadow, just know. <laughs> so I wanna let you know in front of all these people, whenever people see me, the first thing they say is, where's Asia? <laughs> so I might be in your shadow. <laughs> I also wanna thank my team. Um, you know, there's a lot of you here, um, Vern, J Danessa Mackey in the back, Rainier, um, Kaya, Nick Zakos, uh, Michael Comedis, who is stuck in Portugal <laughs> right now. Um, if that's not the best excuse to get out of your first day of work, I don't know <laughs> what is. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to forget anybody. Uh, the Ferrusi family, who has been amazing. Um, I, I truly thank you guys for coming in, and Charlie. You were like a tornado when you hit that campaign, and you know we were blessed to have you. Um, our team here, the council. This is the most diverse council, you know, that we're gonna see, and I'm happy to be an ally to them, and you know, be part of the reason that we're gonna lead Hudson to a better future. Um, our appointments. Can you believe that we're gonna have? Three out of the four city lawyers are going to be women. We have a police commissioner who is specializing in so many different things in Chatham and his um, programs are being implemented all across the capital region, especially at a time where our county is in the top 15 in opioid deaths and overdoses. So we really need to focus on this and that's what my administration is gonna be about. No more talk, it's about action now. And I'm excited to be leading that charge. Commissioners of aging and youth, they've already come up with all these innovative ideals about how to bridge the gap between the two and how to bring in better programming for our youth and for our seniors. So we're going to focus on not just one class of people, but everyone. Yeah. 
I also have to give a shout out to uh, the former mayor, Rick Rector, who's in the building today. Um, <laughs> this campaign was never about me and you. It was more about a different vision. And uh, you've done a wonderful job in the city. Um, I just felt like this is my time and you know this is a new decade but you have nothing to hang your head up about um, it, you know it's always tough going against an incumbent that everybody loves um, so thank you for your duty and one of the great things about Hudson is uh, you enter that fraternity where once a mayor always a mayor so thank you Just ask Rick Scalera, he's, he's done this about nine times. <laughs> right now we're at a point in Hudson where there's a transition, like um, Common Council President Tom said, where we really want to focus on bringing people together. But to me, I never felt like we all needed to be one and sing Kumbaya and hold hands together. I thought the division in the city was that people needed to know that they belonged. Right now we have a high housing crisis in Hudson, but we have different lots all over the city that are not being used. If we have lots that are not being used, we should not have a housing crisis. We really have to push developers to work. So I'm looking forward to this journey and becoming you know, the first African-American mayor of this city. There's been 86 before me, and to know that I'm number 87, and I'm the first African American, and also one of the youngest, and um, best dressed. <laughs> I, I'm very excited about that. Um, I know some of you are wondering about the pocket watch. I do have it today, um, but for some reason, the pockets in my coat are fake. I don't know why they make coats like this. So I had to switch it up a little, but I'm looking forward to this journey, a new decade, year 2020. Um, thank you guys for voting for me. Thank you for believing in me. And I hope that you're patient and you understand that things are gonna take time, but we're gonna get started right away. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Hudson City Government of 2020. Give them another hand. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, our, our generous sponsors that helped us and brought in food. The Wick, Clubhouse Sinky, uh, Duan and his, and his wife cooked. Um, we had several other people just really come together to make this event the momentous and historic event that, that it's become. And as it's been said, this is the beginning of a wonderful new chapter in Hudson's history and we thank you please have refreshments the refreshments are on the side there and we're going to bring up Reverend King Simicherry for a, uh, a closing prayer and um, please enjoy happy new year Everybody. Hello. I just want to thank God for even thinking that I should be worthy to stand here in the midst of this august body of people, history makers, and movers and shakers, and to uh, share a prayer. But I will endeavor to live up to this charge. Um, in the uh, Jewish and Christian and 
Muslim traditions, there's the story of King Solomon. And he was given the task as a young man to lead the nation. And his first act of duty was to pray and to ask God for wisdom. Another great man, liberator Abraham Lincoln, he said that there were many times that he was drawn to his knees because there was no place else to go. So I present that to all of you to know that praying and asking God for wisdom is a good thing. It's a wise thing. And also, there will be times when you have no place else to go. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, our Father and God of all faith and all faithful, I want to say thank you for the giving us this day and for the cloud of witnesses, God, the angels, Lord, the ancestors. We say thank you, God, for bringing us to this day. We thank you for this diverse body of leaders, God, that is reflective of the diversity of our world. We say thank you, God. And Lord, we come and ask as a community that we could come into unity come alongside of our leaders to make this a more better city, county, nation, and world. I ask your blessings upon their families, their spouses and partners, their neighbors and friends, that we all can help keep them lifted when they're tempted to feel down, keep them encouraged when there are those who would want to discourage, keep them, oh God, anointed when they feel disappointed. This I ask, Lord, in your son's name, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.